Hi students, today we are going to study reflection at plane surfaces. You see, we see a lot of reflection in our lives. For example, when you stand in front of the mirror, rays from your body strike the mirror, they come back, they reach your eyes and you see an image of yourself in the mirror. So you see reflection is everywhere. How does this reflection take place? What will happen, you know, if you tilt the mirror you have in front of your eyes? What will happen if you have two mirrors in front of your eyes, you know, and you look at both of them at the same time? Oh, we are going to study a lot of interesting phenomena in this chapter, reflection at plane surfaces. So let's begin. The first thing we need to study is the laws of reflection. Like, how is reflection taking place? There are two laws of reflection. The first is that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. And the second law is that the incident ray, reflected ray and normal at the point of incidence lie in the same plane. Now we have just stated these laws but what do they actually mean? Let's look at some pictures. Here the ray that is falling on the mirror is the incident ray. The ray that is coming back after reflection is the reflected ray. The first law of reflection stated that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. This simply means that the angle the incident ray makes with the normal at the point of contact, this one, is the same as the angle that the reflected ray makes with the normal. This is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of reflection. They are both the same. The second law of reflection states the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal are in the same plane. Now let's say an incident ray is coming like this. Now in which direction will the reflected ray be? For example, will it be here? Will it be here? Will it be here? After all, in three dimensions, you can have an angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection in any direction possible. Like the incident ray is coming like this and the reflected ray is going like this. It could also go upwards. It could also go sideways. So how will you decide exactly in which direction the reflected ray will go? The catch is that you will draw a normal at the point of contact and the incident ray, the normal at the point of contact and the reflected ray will be in the same plane like this. So the reflected ray will be such that the reflected ray, the incident ray and the normal are in the same plane. This is the second law of reflection understood. Now I know we've hardly studied anything. In fact, we just began. But already we are ready to solve an IIT problem. Let's solve it then. This question was asked in IIT J 2002. In this problem, an incident ray here is striking this horizontally kept mirror here. We have to find out the number of times this incident ray will be reflected before it leaves this two mirror system. Find the number of reflections before the ray emerges out. Let's see how we'll do it. Now this ray is incident on this mirror here. So it will get reflected like this, like this and like this again. And like this it will keep getting reflected, keep getting reflected until it moves out of these mirrors. right? Now, if you look at the distance here between the normal and this first reflection here, let's assume that this distance is d. Now since the angle of incidence here is equal to the angle of reflection here, this distance will also be d. Why? Because you see this is 30 degrees, this is 30 degrees, this is also 30 degrees, this is also 30 degrees. So as you can clearly see, this triangle here and this triangle here will be congruent. In fact, all the triangles here will be congruent. Why? Because the angle, this angle is the same, the side length is the same and then the angle 90 degrees is the same here. So you see, all the triangles will be congruent and if all the triangles will be congruent, then this distance will also be d. So you can clearly see that as the ray gets reflected, reflected and reflected again, a distance d, a distance d, a distance d will keep on getting covered. And that means that when the ray has finally, you know, 
had n reflections it will cover a distance of nd because here uh, for one reflection it covered d for the second reflection it covered 2d d plus d for the third reflection it covered 3d first reflection d second reflection d third reflection d so nd will be equal to the length of the mirrors where n is the number of reflections before the ray leaves this this two mirror system so nd is 2 root 3 because this length is given to be 2 root 3 meters now we know that d is simply 0 0.2 tan 30 degrees because this length here is 0 0.2 meters and this angle here is 30 degrees so clearly d is 0 0.2 tan 30 or 0 0.2 divided by root 3 because tan 30 degrees is 1 by root 3 so substituting the value of d here 